Welcome to the program. We've got a full compliment today. We're going to talk about the Reserve Bank's decision, uh, the banks, Woolworths, credit cards, and a lot more. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about money. money. We've only got two minutes. We're going to go through each topic in no more than two minutes. First question to you, Pete, Reserve Bank decided to leave interest rates on hold after the banks decided to make a, an increase um, off cycle. Yeah. Your views, I know you're angry. Yeah, I wrote a piece for switzer.com.au this morning and I've just said, not happy, Glenn, not happy. Yeah. The problem is that he actually said there's an easing bias, but the economy's growing well. To me, that's a mixed message. You either have the slowing economy that needs a cut or you've got a growing economy that doesn't need it. The big problem I find is the banks have come along and have threatened us, or well, it's come, coming, interest rates are going to go up. That's going to hurt the economy, therefore the Reserve Bank should have offset it by cutting interest rates. Paul, Paul take the one. I, 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 defender. No, look, I think it was the right call because I think it would have been imprudent to give into the banks at this imprudent. point in time. Imprudent. Yeah, you can't, you've got to, you've got to show a line. nailing them. <laughs> Well, yeah. that would have, giving in would have been, cutting would have been giving in. But look, yeah. anyhow, I think there were two takes, as you said. Look, they're still they're quite bullish about the economy, particularly know, talking like about that. the, the strength like of the employment market, which we've been saying for a long time, yes, because despite all the naysayers out there, employment is growing each mm. month. Yep. But they did leave an evening, evening bias, and so I wouldn't rule out either a December cut or at least coming back to it again next year if things aren't as optimistic. So what about, so the, what, what about the inflation number? It's actually below the Reserve Bank's well, band it's now. It's just below their band. Are I they going to want to wait until the next in, they wait the next inflation number before they make a call, which I believe is January, so it would mean the next cut then would be February if they yeah, go on that look, number. If they're worried about inflation, they won't be able to do anything until February. But look, I, I think they're, they've given themselves some room. I thought it was a, a, a quite a well-balanced statement, Peter, so I'm going to disagree with you. You're a very conservative, <laughs> yeah. cautious well, person. Got, I like that in, in a business partner, I guess it, it's but a, not in a reserve. It ultimately government. depends on you know, your sort of your view on, on how on you know how confident the consumer is. You know, if you've got a million dollar home loan, this twenty basis points means it's another two thousand bucks that Correct. you won't be spending in shops. You won't be you may, you may be delayed that holiday. Um, it obviously won't come in though till about November well, twenty. It doesn't come in November twenty, yeah, money. So there's and, a bit and, of time. And, and also, seventy five percent of people don't adjust their home loan repayment. They're so far in front. So to be honest, it doesn't have a big impact. It's more psychological rather. But than ladies and gentlemen, this comes from a multi millionaire. Yeah. He doesn't even have a mortgage. You can tell, can't you? Anyway, next one. <laughs> Moving on, next topic: the banks. Uh, what are your thoughts on them at the moment, Pete? Are they are they are they a buy? Are they, are they in trouble? Yeah, well, they're, they're a buy. They're raising interest rates. If the economy is improving, interest rates will probably go further over the next few years. I, I'm I'm bullish on banks. I think people have been you know uh, totally misunderstanding the, the 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 quality of these operations. Their balance sheet's better. I, I do believe the economy grows, and if the economy grows and profits are up and jobs are being created. Banks are going to be beneficiaries, Paul. You you cut your teeth in banks. So growth is good. Yeah, for banks. look, it is good. I mean, I think there are a couple of things that came out of last week's results. A, they were a little disappointing, particularly the National Australia Bank, uh, and B, you know. Revenue growth is going to be hard. So what, I think what a lot of them were saying was that, that they can't, you know, as, as the economy transitions more into a service economy, the demand for credit may not be as strong. And so, you know, the, the, with having a more capital, lower return on equities, you know, the same sort of returns for shareholders aren't going to be there. But that's why they're 20% cheaper already. So the question is, you know, at, at the CBA got to $95, $96, it's mm. currently around about 76 That's a huge fall, mm -hmm. right? I think as long as shareholders, we guess, accept that you know, the end of rising dividends is probably over, but they're not going to be able to, they're not going to be keen to cut them either. And uh, has your view yeah. on the banks changed now, based on the light of what what happened? So the uh, best result was was Westpac. Um, yeah, it has, it has. I was disappointed, disappointed with NAB, and and not because I don't think the the management's got its foot on the pedal properly. It's just that it's going to take a long time with NAB, and mm. I think that's what we forget, and probably I forgot. I'm probably expecting things to turn around too quickly. Mm. And it's going to be a, 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 a long story. And I, that was what disappointed me with NAB. So. Yeah, and Marty, I think the, the bottom line with banks is, and Paul's alluded to it, don't expect that their share price is shooting the lights out. But the dividends will remain, okay, just say 6%. And then the, if the market goes up, say, 10%, they might go up 3 that's still 9%. And frankly, so in terms of the order of best now, it's, where, well, I, how, I'm probably going to change them? it, but I think it's still Sydney Bank's ahead of the Melbourne Bank's. Mm. So Commonwealth Bank and Westpac are the clear leaders. Mm. Um, They've been able to tame, the, tame their margins, haven't they? Yeah, where yeah. The others haven't been able to do that, yeah. as, uh, that as well. I, I, mean, I think now for the long term, an ANZ, yeah. well, let's see what the new, when the new CEO, Shane Elliott, takes over. I mean, will he change the Asian strategy? Yeah, the trouble with the, the ANZ Bank is the Asian strategy has not worked, right? 
You don't really know whether we're in Asia, Asia or out of Asia. Asia. We'd like it to. Mm. And until that happened, all the, the good part of the ANZ result was it's domestic business. Yeah. So, would, so, so Mark Smith's tenure, was that successful or was no, that unsuccessful? No. No? No, no, no. Shareholders should be thanking him that he's finally going. Next topic, Woolworths. We'll go, we'll go back to Paul because he's got some strong views on it and then we'll get, mm. we'll get Peter's thoughts. So uh, Woolworths obviously had a, had a profit um, uh, downgrade. You've been saying for a while that Woolworths isn't a buy. Uh, the, the recent result would confirm your view. When is Woolworths going to be a buy though? I still think it's too early to get Russia to Woolworths. I think there are a couple of things that have got to happen. One, they've got to appoint a new CEO first. And, and he or she and, is and going to be good. And we've got to hear what he or she is going to do. Whenever a new CEO comes in, they, they clear the decks, changes, management changes. Sure. That all takes time. So that's the first question. And secondly, I want to see a bit more momentum in their sales results. At the moment, they're getting thrashed by coals. This, this quarter was even worse than the previous quarter. It was negative. Masters is still a mess. Yeah, negative one percent. Masters is a mess. Big W is a basket case. Maybe they'll sell it off. Whatever it is. But look, I just think you got to. This is not going to be easy to turn this company around. And so my big take last week, are looking at both Woolworths and National Australia Bank, is it takes a long time to turn these companies around, and it's too early to rush in there. So I reckon you got time. What's your view as a long-term investor? He's not trying to. Yeah, the market is just yeah, trying, look, trying to accumulate. Way. Everything Paul says is right, but everyone will will move when the, those ducks are in a row. If I see Woolworths getting down to $21, I will buy at $21. I might even be tempted at 22. And I might get in a little bit too early, but once they do get a good CEO, once they flog off, say, Big W, or they, they actually improve Masters, then the share price will come back. The dividend will still be pretty good at $21. Well, it's going to be cut this year, yeah. so get used to a dividend cut. Yeah. Um, so on $21, it'd be not a bad deal. Yeah, look, it'd be okay. So look, I just think you've got time on your side with Woolworths. Okay, so if you're a long-term holder, you're a whole Woolworths, I don't, I'm not selling either, yeah. right? Because yeah. picking bottoms is hard. But yeah. I just think to put more money, marginal money to Woolworths, I think... So would your catalyst be when the, the new CEO starts or when I'd the new like CEO starts new and sets CEO's, out their vision? Yeah, sets right. out their vision a little bit yeah. and we get a bit of a feel for what he or she is going to do and, and how could, they're going to change that could, that could be a year away. It could, well, it could be within uh, a couple of months. Yeah, but, well, yeah. you know. With QBE, it took 18 months before the, the market reacted to a new yeah. CEO and all the, the bad news that came out. I will concede that. Yeah. Mm. Moving on, next topic, credit cards, our personal finance tip for today. Uh, basically, if you're going to have a credit card, you know some people now actually use debit cards and find them to be just as useful. A debit card will restrict the spending to the cash that you have in the bank. Mm. But if you're going to have a credit card, always make sure that you pay off the balance within the interest-free period, so you don't get slugged with interest charges. Uh, also, you know, minimise the number of cards that you do use. And then I think the other point is to, to shop around. Uh, ME Bank has come out with a quite a, a, an innovative initiative called recently. Frank, isn't it? Yeah, a new credit card, card called, called Frank. Frank. With yeah. a rate of 9.99% with uh, no fees whatsoever. And 55 days. 55 days. Um, after 55, after 55 days. days interest free. Yep. Uh, so that's a, a really competitive rate. You know, you can pay rates up to close to, to 20%. So, so shopping around and, and, and looking for a good, a good deal on the credit cards, particularly for your, for your kids or your yeah, grandkids. Yeah, I mean, you're not getting the rewards, but your kids don't need the rewards no, either. You pay so reward, much for that, yeah. you know, so if you've and it's got hard to use, it, use the rewards for anything these days anyway. And, and also the money... Maybe a few upgrades. But, Maybe a few upgrades. But also, yeah. with the money you save, um, you can actually get those those deals they sell six months before the, you fly anyway. The, fr the frequent flyer thing is... It really exaggerates. Some people use them brilliantly. It's good, it's good for regular traveller yeah. who want to upgrade with points mm. to, to another class. But yeah. other than to actually get, get a ticket can be quite difficult. So that, there is Correct. a bit of a scam there. Yeah. But, but, but it, Marty, did you say that after f it's interest free up for 55, up to 55 days? Up for 55 days. That's the yeah. important yeah. point yeah. to make. Yeah. And I just want to, one other finance tip I want to throw in. We don't, we're out of yep. time, I think, Marty. But transition to retirement, um, it's clearly they're going to change, they're going to axe that next year. It'll be prospective rather than retrospective. Mm. But uh, if you're over 56, you haven't got a transition retirement pension, really, well, you've got about, about nine months, I reckon, to get this organised, maybe even less. So mm. I think it's the odds on the battle will be I uh, get the axe. That's yeah. good advice. That's all we've got time for. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money. Shh.